inside you. Why don't we get a perspective of this? This is research at the outer edge. We are at the General Motors Research Laboratories in a brand new kind of research facility. Here, men of science are exploring new methods of using the electronic computer. Currently, an important focus of this research is man to computer and computer to man graphical communication. This kind of communication is essential to the use of digital computers in design. Jack one, design augmented by computers. How can the power of the computer be applied to the design process? Here are the tools researchers use to help find the answer. A large scale digital computer and peripheral devices in a configuration designed specifically to apply the computer's power to advanced research. For instance, the computer's own extra-large memory is augmented by high-speed disk memory and drum storage devices. The system incorporates an advanced multi-programming monitor developed here that allows the computer to continue to solve engineering problems, perform its regular routine duties, and still be available on call for design research. The time the computer is spending on design problems is indicated by the duration of each beeping sound that is heard. The design research laboratory adjoins the machine room. Here the hardware is arranged so that the man at the graphic console can take the dominant role in the design process. Using an electric pencil, he requests a display on the console's viewing screen. The computer responds providing information from its giant memory. The man examines it, modifies, adds, deletes, examines the new design. However, man can't function with the blinding speed of the computer. So while he reasons and reacts, while he thinks, the multi-programming monitor switches the computer from design work to other problems. The graphic console was built to specifications determined by GM research. Here, in effect, the reasoning ability of man is combined with the computational speed of the electronic computer. These are key design lines for the trunk lid for a new model car. The designer requests an enlargement of this small circle section of the drawing, and the computer responds. Now it shows a greatly enlarged view. He requests a permanent photographic copy of the present state of his design. In this research activity, the designer and computer are conversing in a graphical language, as two designers might discuss and adjust a drawing. He tells the computer that he wishes to modify the design. So the computer responds by giving him the requested statement from his program. The man now modifies the statement.
The designer doesn't want to make a permanent change yet. But he directs the computer to process his latest design. The computer displays the numbered steps as it goes through a few minutes of computation. Then the new design is displayed on the console for the designer. Now, he wants to compare the modified design with the original. So he requests a photographic copy of the new design and the computer obliges. With the assistance of the image processor, another major component of the DAC-1 system. The photographic reproduction processes are automatic. And within 30 seconds, the designer will have permanent documentation on film of both the original design and the modification. He compares the two drawings to verify that the documentation of the modified design is complete and to his satisfaction. Thus, the DAC-1 system not only aids in the design process, but also provides the designer with a permanent hard copy of his drawing for review and communication with others. One vital concept in this two-way graphical communication between man and machine is the mathematical model of the design stored in the computer's memory. A map can help us understand what a mathematical model is. The state capital is located at I-9. Every point on the drawing, the map, may be similarly located by one letter and one number, alpha numerically described. Name several points and draw a connecting line, and we have an alphanumeric model, a simplified but accurate representation of the line. In the computer, the representation is, of course, much more complex. Using mathematical equations rather than a list of numbers and letters, it becomes a mathematical model. With the mathematical model represented in the computer's memory, the computer can be programmed to display one line, two lines, or many lines for graphical communication with the designer. But how are new lines entered into the computer's memory? Several years ago, GM researchers proved the feasibility of programming a computer to read and store graphic information for development of a mathematical model. The technique has been developed constantly since then. A key line from a designer's sketch is entered into the image processor. The drawing is photographed, and the photo is developed. The automatic photographic process takes precious seconds, so during this period, the computer is free to work on other projects. This multi-programming, this efficient use of costly computer time, is essential to economic application of a man-computer team. Once developed, the drawing image is positioned and scanned by a high-resolution cathode ray tube to enter the line into the computer. The computer has attempted to read the graphic information, but something is wrong. The visual response indicates that the whole line could not be followed. Why? The man was programmed to recognize an ink smudge long ago. But a smudge recognition program for a computer hasn't been written yet. So the man must help. He calls for an enlarged image of the trouble area, and he pilots the computer through, showing point by point where the line should be. The man-machine team has completed its work. The scanning appears to be adequate. Another key line is entered into the mathematical model. 
Design augmented by computers at General Motors Research. Here, research has achieved significant steps of success in the important fields of computer-aided design and man-machine communications. These are first steps in a continuing program. Graphical information is read directly under computer control into the computer's memory. With the equipment and programming already developed and operating, the designer and computer can converse in mutually familiar terms. The communication console with its display tube, electric pencil, typewriter-like keyboard, card reader, and message lights is a machine that makes possible dynamic two-way design communications between man and the computer. The image processor allows the designer to walk in with a drawing, work out a problem, and walk out with one or more new drawings under his arm. In addition, the output of the DAC-1 system can be tapes to control automatic drafting machines or numerically controlled machine tools. This is DAC-1 today. What high promise of reward does this new kind of research hold for tomorrow? Most important, it can give designers time for more truly creative effort. Every product we use, whether it's machined, assembled, stamped, wired, welded, or hand modeled, must be designed. Drawings are required, and using conventional methods, a mere 10% of design effort is truly creative. 90% is digging and searching, plotting lines, and referring to tables. Much more research and development are necessary before the approaches demonstrated with DAC-1 can be utilized in production. But now, the door is opening for the computer to take a burden from the designer's shoulders, make it easier to include engineering changes, and thus improve manufacturing processes, lower costs, and enhance the quality of manufactured products. It happened at General Motors Research Laboratories. Thank you.